How's it going everyone? Chris here back with another video. Before this video gets started, I wanted to say thank you once again for all the support on my latest videos. I've been getting a lot of comments and everything and I really appreciate it. I see all of you guys. 93% uh, of you guys are not subscribed, which is just crazy. So if you guys can hit the like button, comment down below if you have any questions or anything, and subscribe with post notifications to be notified when I make new videos. With that out of the way, I'm here to show you guys how I'm going to be setting up my helium miner. So I'm going to start off by showing you guys what I have for this antenna setup. I purchased everything that I could find and then there was some stuff that I had laying around the house but I will have a alternatives that you guys can purchase that is the same or better than what I have. For instance, I have this about, I would say, two foot copper pipe. They sell four foot copper pipes on online that you guys can get for a relatively good price. So. I'm going to start off with this antenna mount. Again, all of these things will be linked in the description. This is a 22 inch TV antenna mount. It mounts, it's going to mount to the peak of my roof on the siding and it's going to come with these two yellow galvanized, yellow zinc coated um, clamps. So it's going to come with this and two U-bolts. I'm not using the U-bolts. I'm going to be using uh, these carriage bolts that I bought from Lowe's and I'm going to have these, uh, these are quarter inch by five inch so it's a quarter inch bolt and it's five inches long you can get away with four and a half I have a lot of room here and basically what's gonna happen is these carriage bolt or the carriage bolts go through both of them you don't have to have a nut necessarily in the middle here but I do and then it's gonna be the antenna is gonna go in here and it's gonna sit on the roof like that so this is not the antenna I'm going to be using this is a 3 dbi that I didn't really have any good luck with I'm probably going to return it and that is that so I wanted to make note that if you are getting the carriage bolts and you're going with the same setup I have do not get these galvanized bolts or if you do make sure you bring one of the nuts with you to check to see if it fits because these galvanized bolts actually have a coating on them that makes them not able to be threaded with a normal bolt you have to get a specific uh, specific bolt specific nut to bolt onto it so that is the antenna mount. Sorry for that being a little bit loud. Next, I'm going to go with the copper pipe. This is a copper pipe I had laying around the house. I believe it was used for my water lines back in the day or something like that. And this is a, I believe this is a three quarters, yes, this is a three quarters inch uh, ground rod clamp. It's kind of egg shaped and basically you're going to put the copper wire in here and then you're going to hammer this in the ground. I'm going to get back to this later, but basically you want to make sure you put this clamp on before you hammer this into the ground because it will start to flatten out the top and then you're not going to be able to get this clamp on. It says it's three quarters of an inch. I'm not sure if this one got bent or if this copper tubing I measured incorrectly, but basically I just took a little hammer to it and you can see it's not a circle anymore. It's a circle down here, but I just took a hammer, just like one hit and then this fit over it because it just needs to fit on the top. So that's great. Uh, and now it's not fitting. Oh, good. We're back on. Okay. So I talked about the carriage bolts. I talked about the mounts. One thing I wanted to note before the mounts also. So these two yellow zinc ones come with the antenna, and then these two normal. Uh, I don't. I'm not sure if they're plated with anything. I would assume they are. But these come with the actual rack antenna that you buy. So all of that stuff is already included, which is great. Now I'm going to talk about the cabling. So this is the cabling for the antenna. Uh, you're going to have this, which I bought, and I'm probably going to return because I'm not going to use it. And then there's this. This is LMR 400, and this is RG58. You can see the difference in the actual cable. This is a lot stronger. This is like straight copper wire. This stuff is great. It's going to transfer your antenna DBI. You're going to have a very little loss of signal. I have eight feet of this. There's been a lot of talk, you know, if it's 10 feet where you start to lose uh, your DBI or if it's a, uh, like 15 feet, everyone has a different opinion. Just, it seems like, I'm not sure what the actual number is, but I got eight feet. I feel like I might need to get a longer cable, but uh, we'll see about that. I think this will work for now. And if I really want to change it in the future, I can. So this is the cable. And then you're going to need a lightning arrestor. Now, now what this does is very important. It connects to the bottom of the antenna and to the cable. So it's going to go in between like that. And basically what this does is it diffuses any static electricity buildup that may otherwise happen if you don't have your uh, cable grounded. So if in the case you do get struck by lightning, 
this will ground it to the ground which is going to wire up to this copper pipe with a very long cable that I'm gonna have so it just comes with a little crimp connector and it's not focusing but it's got a little crimp connector one end connects to the antenna one end connects to the cable one end connects to the ground so that is that you're also going to need a pair of crimpers now these are super cheap I think I got these from a thrift store and I've been using these for like 60 years these are amazing the amount of projects this has saved me on is awesome finally you're going to need copper grounding wire now this stuff is where it does get expensive so if you guys do have any neighbors or anything don't be afraid to ask if they have any wire this wire is not the green wire that is going to be in the description below but this is very similar it's got the full copper wire inside of it i'm just going to be using this because i know this is going to work um really happy that i actually have it around the house because it's like 42 dollars worth of copper you can you got to make sure it's solid copper if it's anything that's like little strands it is not going to be doing a good job grounding and dissipating that static electricity what's i think all that's left are these bolts and i'm going to go to my local hardware store and get different bolts because these are rusted but basically you're going to need four bolts to actually go through here and actually bolt this up to the house um, I have three right now. One of them's rusted, like I said. So I'm gonna head to the hardware store and get these, and then I'm gonna give you guys the final dimensions and final specifications of everything I have in the description below. But basically, once I get started, I'm probably gonna be doing a voiceover. I'm gonna be switching from this uh, DSLR camera to a GoPro, and then I'll be doing a voiceover just to make it easier, just so I get every detail documented. But I'm gonna show you guys the install. I'm going to show you guys how to ground it and then I'm going to show you guys you know the final height and my uh, initial reactions and then from there we'll go on with a two week review and I'll compare it to the attic setup that I have right now. So I think that's it for today. Uh, let's just let's just get started. Alright so now you can see I'm going to be working on the lightning arrestor. This is what's going to ground my antenna and like I said earlier it has two connections and then the grounding part so there's a little locking ring and then this is the actual ring terminal that i'm going to be connecting to the copper wire um, the cable that i have actually has three different wires they're all copper but i'm going to be using the one in the middle which is already stripped so i'm just going to put the crimpers over and just crimp this shut and that should be the end of it now this next part is not really necessary, but I'm just going to be putting some heat shrink tubing over it just to close the connection and make sure it just holds. Um, if you guys haven't used heat shrink tubing, it's really easy. You just slide it over and then you heat it with either a hot air. I mean, you can use a blow dryer if you really want. I'm going to be using a little torch and you can see right here I'm torching it and that is going to make it nice and snug. So that's it. And finally, I'm going to be screwing it in to the lightning arrestor and that's it for the cabling for now. Alright so now I'm actually going up to the roof and you can see that I'm going to be mounting it on the white trim board uh, that I'm climbing up to right now on the ladder. Basically the issue I was having was that it is made out of aluminum and the bolts that I bought, the uh, galvanized lag bolts, are not puncturing it so I have a hammer and a nail and I'm just breaking the holes where the bolts are actually going to go so it has something that the bolts can actually get through. So as this video is going along, I just wanted to say if you guys are planning on doing this and you don't feel comfortable with a certain area, like right now I am on the peak of a roof and I was a little uncomfortable, but uh, if you guys are not comfortable with any of this, do not hesitate to get help. There's stuff like Angie's List and you have your neighbors and you can always ask for someone's professional advice. I'd rather you guys be safe than risk doing what I'm doing and not feel comfortable or lose your balance and fall. Alright, so now I am installing the TV antenna mount. This is probably the sketchiest part of the whole thing because I had both of my hands up in the air. I didn't have anything to really hold on to, so I was kind of just trusting this uh, little ladder I had. Overall, I think I did pretty well. Basically, um, it was just a lot of force and it was an awkward angle, so definitely take your time with this. Make sure you have proper uh, you know, ground footing so you guys don't slide or anything like that, but... Now I got the first bolt in, it was kind of, I was going a little bit slow so I didn't over torque it and just break both my wrists because my drill is like insanely powerful. Alright, it's up, we're done. Oh wait, what am I doing? 
How many did you put in? One. <laughs> All right, guys. So now it's set up. I got it mounted exactly where I want. Now I'm gonna hook up the antenna. Something I didn't mention is you're gonna need like a silicone based. I'm gonna use Flex Seal. You guys probably know what Flex Seal is to actually protect the inside of your house. I'm gonna seal up the hole that I cut. I didn't record that, but I'll show you guys at the end. I'm gonna seal up the hole that I cut with Flex Seal to make sure no water goes in the house. And that hole that I made is for the antenna cable. So let's let's get to it. So right now I'm getting ready to put the antenna in the operate position. This is probably the most exciting part of the whole thing because everything is actually coming together and I didn't break anything successfully. Uh, it, all, it all worked. So I connected the cables uh, to the antenna and then I pushed it inside and I did not show that part but it's pretty self-explanatory. You basically just got to route that actual cable that goes to your hotspot miner inside. And then I siliconed up the hole and then I connected the lightning arrestor with the cable that I showed previously. Um, and then I connected that to the antenna and the white cable that you see dangling by my foot is the actual grounding cable that I'm going to be routing down towards the ground. All right, so right now I am securing the grounding cable to the side of the house. I decided to use flex seal tape because not only did we not have anything to actually like tie down the cable, I was going to use some simple uh, tie downs where you, you nail it in, but we didn't have any that were big enough. And also I would just want to see how this held up over time because I've used this in other applications, this, this tape. And I'll have this tape in the description along with everything else if you guys need any parts or anything like that. But this seems to be holding up pretty well, and I will get back to it towards the end of the video once I show like everything is set up. But this was kind of like the most time-consuming process out of everything. It took about 30 minutes in total to mount the antenna, and then it took about 20 minutes to actually ta tape this whole thing down because there's just the the cable is just it's very non-flexible. I it's very stiff. That's the word. So. I was having difficulty kind of bending it and getting the tape to secure and then I also wanted to make sure it doesn't like flap around in the wind or anything like that but you guys should have a much easier approach if you mount it on the corner of your house uh, I just happened to mount it on the top all right everybody so just want to show you guys like the finished product right now the antenna is all set up. You can see I got the carriage bolts going. I tightened the ones going to the, and why is it focusing on the finger, on the antenna mount. And then I tightened it with the actual antenna. Then I ran the LMR 400 through a hole in the house and sealed that with silicone. And then this is the grounding wire, which you guys are gonna have. It's probably green, unless you have the exact same thing as me. The solution here is kind of semi-permanent. Um, we're just going to run it until it fails and uh, hopefully the wind won't take any of this stuff out. I tightened everything pretty, pretty aggressively so should be good. So now I'm going to focus on grounding it down into the ground and I'll show you guys that. I'm going to use a ring terminal like it's up at the top. You guys can get these at any auto parts store or you can go like Ace Hardware or Home Depot or something like that. So now I got this hooked up, ring terminal, okay? I'm gonna put this on the bolt, and this bolt is gonna make contact along with everything else. I'm gonna put this on the inside, underneath, so that it actually makes contact with the copper. And then I'm also gonna put the bolt in to hold it in place. And this is a size 14. If you buy the same one as me, it's a size 14 socket. Now since we're just getting hammered in the ground, I'm going to hammer it in these bushes just so it's kind of out of the way. So now you guys can see, I got the antenna mounted all the way up there. Bringing it down, going right into below the deck. I just push it down, terminaled and hit that into the ground now I have ground now it's done so that is how you do ground that is it now what I'm gonna do is set it up in the attic pull the wires through get it all connected there and then we should be done all right so now I'm in my attic I got the exhaust fan on so sorry if it's a little bit loud but I got it run I got power to it and you can see it's got the red light because I just unplugged and redirected the power cord because uh, this fan leaks a little bit but 
I ran discovery mode. I didn't see that big of a difference. It might just be the, the weather outside. It's a little bit cloudy today. I'm not sure, but hopefully uh, in the coming days, I will see an increase in rewards and I will totally do a two week review. I got it grounded. I got everything settled and finished up. So I think that's going to conclude it for now. So I'll meet you guys back at the computer. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. I hope you guys did enjoy on how to install a helium antenna. I tried to make it as simple as possible. If there is any questions, please feel free to comment down below. I had a lot of fun recording this. I had a lot of fun actually getting it up in the air and I'm looking forward to seeing my earnings go up. If they do, I would assume they do and I will get back to you guys. So I will have like a two week review uh, comparing it to my attic setup. I had the 5.8 in the attic and we'll compare and we'll can see, uh, you know, if I'm earning more, if I'm getting more witnesses. I ran the discovery mode. I was getting the same amount of witnesses as before. And I think it might just be because of the weather or because it might take a couple days for it to actually resync in that area because I did move it up a little bit. So it might take a bit. I remember when I switched to the 5.8, it did take a bit for it to actually adjust. So that is it for this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you did enjoy it. I really appreciate it. It helps out the algorithm. It helps out my channel. And the support lately has just been insane. So I really appreciate everything you guys have been doing for me. I will see you all in the next video. Peace out. You want to throw me up a water for a second? Here, this one? Sure. Forever, I want to be forever young. Yeah. Do you want to live forever? What a day.